Hello and welcome to another Can Indian channel feature. This is part of MBA 101 leadership section. In this video, we're going to be looking at one of the contingency theories of leadership, which is situational leadership model. There will be another video highlighting the path goal theory model and the Fiedler's contingency model. Please feel free to watch them. It's segregated in a folder MBA 101 leadership in this YouTube channel. Diving straight onto this video, situational leadership simply states that there is no one best leadership style for all situations. The leadership style that is best for a particular situation depends on the employee skill sets and attitude. The situation leadership has evolved over time and we're going to be looking at the model created by Paul Hersey and Kenneth Blanchard. My synopsis and basic explanation to this model is in the following manner. The x-axis signifies the degree of directive behavior that the leader must exhibit. That is, the degree of one-way communication from the leader to the employee. The y-axis signifies the degrees of supportive behavior that the leader must exhibit. This is the degree of two-way communication between the leader and the employee. This bar signifies the development of the employee moving from the right to the left. The employee is becoming more competent and more confident at his or her job. The colors above this bar coordinate with the squares above it. D1 is denoted as low competence and low commitment. This would best describe a new employee. When I was in university, I used to have a part-time job at a pizza store. The store had a high turnover rate and the new employees hired would be low in competence because the company paid them minimum wage and they had low commitment. D2 is low to some competence and confidence. Use the same above example. I was at this job for about 6 months and I was promoted to a ship supervisor. I was getting maybe $2 above the minimum wage, which made me feel a little better, but I still lacked the managerial confidence. Hence, I was constantly coached by the pizza store manager. D3, moderate competence and confidence. Again, I'm going to use the same example. I worked there for almost three years and was promoted again to be a junior store manager. I had learned almost every job in the store and was competent and confident of my managerial duties. Every now and then, I would still seek decision acceptance from my boss as I still lacked the experience of being a head store manager. D4, high competence and confidence. This best describes an employee who has been performing a particular job for years. They are highly competent and confident and need little to no direction. In my last year of university, I continued to work at that pizza store and was promoted to be a head store manager as I had learned to handle schedules, inventory, and deal with customer complaints. The franchise owners delegated all their tasks to me and in return, they paid me a good salary and some ownership in the store. Let's look at that chart again, recollecting my different stages at the pizza store. It was imperative for the franchise owners to identify employee readiness, which is extremely crucial for any leader. It helps the leaders identify the best leadership style when dealing with each individual employee. My friends worked at that store as well, but no one there was promoted because they did not take their job seriously. They all figured that they were, including me, were studying engineering, and the pizza store duties meant the last amount of difference to them. I, however, worked really hard, always picked up extra shifts, and was nice to everyone and took my job very seriously. After I graduated, I thanked the owners for the job. I also graduated with no student debt, unlike my friends. Also, working at the pizza store as a manager taught me the managerial skills early on. Let's go back to the topic and look at different leadership styles and identify when each one is the best to use. Telling S1. This style involves the leader telling people what to do and how to do it. S1 quadrant is reflective to directing behavior. 
New employees need high directive behavior and high supportive behavior. That is, they need a leader that tells them specifically what to do. Selling S2 This style involves more back and forth between leaders and followers. Leaders sell the ideas and message to get group members to buy into the process. Employees at this stage ask a lot of questions. There's a great deal of both one-way and two-way communication between the supervisor and the employee. If you remember my example of the pizza store, this is when I was told by the managers that I was doing a good job and that if I keep up the good work, they would promote me to a junior manager. Participating S3 In this approach, the leader offers less direction and allows members of the group to take a more active role in coming up with ideas and making decisions. Employees at this stage no longer need to be told what to do, but the leader still needs to be involved. There is still some developing to do. This is when I was made the junior store manager. I would run the entire store operation. However, I still needed help with dealing with customer claims, inventory management, etc. Delegating S4 This style is characterized by a less involved, hands-off approach to leadership. Group members tend to make most of the decisions and take most of the responsibility for what happens. Once the employees has fully developed, they need little to no direction. Just simply assign them tasks and let them do their job. This is when I was made the store manager, was provided a good salary and profit percentage on store sales. I was running the entire store and the franchise owners just laid back and enjoyed their much needed family time while I took care of their business. Remember, as an employee evolve over time, supervisors or leaders must change their leadership style. Now to wrap up and conclude this video about situational leadership, the key elements are as follows. Number one, identify employee readiness, their competence and confidence. Number two, match your leadership style to the employees based on this readiness. Number three, no two employees or situations are alike. Thank you for watching another Can Indian channel feature. Please feel free to like, share or subscribe. Peace.